Hey y'all, Rick Houston here, and I want to tell you about my new show, the Moonshine and Motorsports Racing Podcast. I've partnered up with the state of North Carolina Department of Natural and Cultural Resources to help uncover the history behind moonshining mountain boys, professional wheelmen, and the backwoods and city lights of the Tar Heel State. In the first episode, I sat down with Winston Kelly at the NASCAR Hall of Fame for a little behind-the-scenes gossip about Junior Johnson's engineering skills. He's got two things in his hand, pipe wrench and channel lock pliers, and they weren't new. They yeah. had been, they had been yeah. around the block a time or two. Wasn't so, the first deal they built, I bet. No, no, you know, you, I think they were, they had, the, the pliers had been red before, but paint had worn off. And in the second episode, I talked to a professional hillbilly, AKA Dr. Daniel Pierce of UNC Asheville to find out the real history of moonshiners and their battles with the revenuers. He wrote about one of his experience of trying to chase down this uh, this bootlegger and this this souped up car, and he he complained that the government gave him these piece of crap cheapo cars and that, that were really no match. But he thought he was doing pretty good, and then the guy just hits it and just takes off and practically disappears. But then the guy makes a bootleg turn uh, and comes back towards him. And it, it, as he said, it was a game of chicken, and I was the chicken. And so he ran off the road. <laughs> and actually, he was the guy who, who caught Junior Johnson at his daddy still when Junior got tangled up in a, in a barbed wire fence. So check out the Moonshine and Motorsports Racing Podcast, available on YouTube, DailyDownForce.com, and all of your favorite podcasting platforms. And be sure to check out my regular show on NASCAR history, the Scene Vault Podcast. Hey there, NASCAR fans. Have you got your copy of the latest edition of NASCAR Pole Position Print Magazine? If not, there's no better time than now to subscribe at PolePositionMag.com. NASCAR Pole Position is the only print magazine covering NASCAR. Officially licensed by NASCAR, NASCAR Pole Position Magazine is published throughout the NASCAR season, and each edition is an instant collector's item. Backed with great feature stories and photography. The magazine is even mailed to you in a poly bag for those who love to collect NASCAR memorabilia. At PolePositionMag.com, you can even find past issues available to purchase. Get your subscription to NASCAR Pole Position and get great NASCAR content delivered straight to your mailbox throughout the season. Learn more at PolePositionMag.com. That's PolePositionMag.com. Eric Estep here. One of my favorite parts of being a NASCAR fan is collecting die casts. It's how I got my start on YouTube, actually. To me, a room is not complete until it features shelves of NASCAR die cast cars. It's as good a time as ever to continue your collection or begin an all new one by pre ordering your favorite driver's 2022 next gen die cast at lionelracing.com or at any authorized Lionel retailer. Lionel is the official diecast of NASCAR, and don't miss Lionel Racing's NASCAR Authentics diecasts at a Walmart or Target near you. Not only is Lionel the official diecast of NASCAR, but they're also official supporters of the Out of the Groove Podcast Network. So what are you waiting for? Head to LionelRacing.com to order your favorite driver's 2022 diecast. Hello, folks, and welcome into Next Gen Creators, the Daily Downforce podcast where we highlight the next generation of NASCAR content creators. Joshua Lepowski here with you, and we have a great guest here for today's episode. Black Flags Matter, Darian Gillingham is joining the show here today. Darian is someone that has a, a rather interesting story when it comes to NASCAR content creation. He uh, really started joining YouTube and at least his modern channels form in uh, about five, six years ago. And, uh, you know, again, you know, he puts it on his YouTube page. You know, his his channel philosophy is highlighting the good and the bad of motorsports. But, uh, you know, Darian is someone that, you know, he has done a lot of things also outside of just NASCAR YouTube that he uh, is discussing here. He discusses a lot about some of his outside interests. He also talks about how he got into NASCAR as well. And he also talks a bit about, you know, some of the challenges that he handled in terms of uh, trying to, uh, 
garner some respect for lack of a better term and getting nascar credentials and uh, all that sort of stuff and some of the lessons that he learned during um a lot of those times and uh some of the challenges that he's had to face as a nascar youtuber and uh it was a very awesome episode very awesome conversation here with darian and uh, he had great energy very excited to talk about everything that he has been through as a nascar content creator without further ado here is Next Gen Creators with Darian Gilliam, Black Flags Matter. Darian, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm fantastic. Yeah, I was waiting for y'all to, to ask me on this stuff, man. It's an honor. I appreciate it. Uh, I listened to the first episode with Eric and I uh, can't wait to get going. Yeah, I will say after we did our first episode, I think it was a page or social media person. I think she works with you at the fairgrounds. If I if I oh, am yeah, getting yeah. it correct, mm-hmm. um, she told me that you had asked her. So you were uh, you were very quickly on our list when uh, we released that very first episode. And we're happy to be able to have you on now. So it's 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 incredibly exciting to uh, to have you on and to have you joining us here today. So, you know, you know, Darian, you know, you you work at the National Fairgrounds, as we know, and you also are a NASCAR YouTuber as well. But go all the way back to the beginning like where did those first seeds of being a nascar fan uh begin to be planted uh in your life uh so really my mom she's from stanton virginia she grew up there you know nascar is pretty big in the south and especially back in the day seemed like every household in the south i feel like was watching nascar back in those days but she got into it and then naturally she would have the races on i got into it Uh, she wouldn't have cared um um so like let's say there was a um if there was like some type of scenario where like i didn't get into it she still would have watched the races anyway you know she does her own thing but no like i got into it and uh yeah you know i started following the sport um at a pretty young age in first grade and i fell in love with it ever since man and then it was right around 2017 when uh, Junior retired that I was like, oh, gosh, because I had been rooting for him since first grade. So I was like, oh, gosh, like, was I really a junior fan or, or a NASCAR fan? You know, because like once he retires, am I still going to watch? But then as the year progressed, I was like, nah, I'm still going to watch it. But I got to do it a different type of way since I, I'm i never going to have another driver to root for like that. And so um, it was the perfect timing. Uh, I started the channel. Uh, first upload was on December 28th, 2017. And I think a couple of days before Danny B uploaded his first video. And funny enough, Jarrett, a.k.a. the iceberg, I watched a I watched one of his uh, points videos actually um, a few months prior in July in a freaking Ikea waiting room. And Eric, I've always watched for years. So it's pretty crazy that we were all able to link up together. And really, most of us started our channels at the same time for the same reason, because we were all Dale Jr. fans, me, Danny B and I and uh, the iceberg. And uh, we needed an ex- and some type of excuse to stay into the sport. And the rest is history, I guess. I understand what that's like changing NASCAR fans because I was a Jeff Gordon fan growing up. So 2015 was a, was a, was a tough year for me. So I, I understand that's a, that's a, that's a big transition when, you know, you've been rooting for a driver your entire life and then all of a sudden that changes really quickly. But so if, if I'm understanding it correctly, it's YouTube kind of fueled that passion for you as your favorite driver was leaving. If I'm understanding correctly. Yeah. And I was already into it. So like, that was the point. So like, you know, you had guys like the community was, was way different back in the day. Like, I mean, you know, you had your, you know, you had your, um, some, some personalities like Eric Gee steps all he's been in like every era. I feel like, you know, oh, I yeah. remember watching him in, uh, in middle school at first, but nah, you had guys like real Radman, kamikaze games, you know, what if racing, um, JC one, four, two, four, one of my personal favorites, you know, and, I, I'm, I know I'm missing some others. Uh, well, like NASCAR Nixon as well. So like you had um, a mix of personality and like compilation channels. Um, but now it's like it seems to be more personalities nowadays, I feel like. So it's not just the podcast. You got, you know, plenty of other guys, you know, Slap, David Land, you know. Oh, yeah. David Land was in the previous era, too. So <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, now I guess we're in this like sort of next gen era, I guess you could say for the podcast. So. Uh, fitting for the podcast title but uh yeah no i've always like i've always watched uh nascar videos on youtube my entire life like really since um since the platform first existed yeah the first thing i ever looked up was the 2001 daytona 500 because i always heard about it when i was younger but like i'm like well i want to see it because like everyone talks about this dark day like i want to see like what the broadcast is like and i think the original video i watched is still up so that, that would have been gosh i think 15 16 years ago wow it feels 
feels just like yesterday. I think you've done a video on the 2001 Daytona 500, if I remember right. Is that correct? Yeah, that yes. was uh, uh, the yeah. greatest. Like it could have been the greatest. It yeah, really right. could have been. It, like for the yeah. first 199 laps, it was pretty. It was pretty wild, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, when people think about the context of the time, like that was the year following the 2000 Daytona 500, which was panned as the worst Daytona 500 in history by many people, and, and then it became the 01 Daytona 500. You're right. It was great for really about 499 miles until that mm-hmm. last, you know, that last tragic final quarter yeah. of a lap when Dale Earnhardt passed away. But uh, yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, that's, that's, you're, you're really kind of going back and, and kind of allowing me to go back into the way back machine here of all of these NASCAR YouTube channels that were big back in the day. You know, you're mentioning, you know, Eric Estep was big, but obviously he was in a lot different. We talked about that in the first episode of this podcast, he was in a much different uh, content, you know, content was just a lot different back then, you know, quite simply so it kind of changed so you know when you when you got into nascar youtube were you were you really trying to revolutionize anything i mean obviously your channel is about the good and the bad of motorsports but you know were you trying to revolutionize anything or were you more so being inspired by the people you'd watch at the time oh it was just inspiration yeah and also too like i didn't even mention the sports youtubers like that was like some of the like that was sort of the formula i picked up or it was a mix of NASCAR creators and sports creators. And I had seen what the sports creators were doing. And I was like, like I would watch videos from urinating tree, five points of vids. And I'm like, NASCAR doesn't have this. It's just mostly compilation. Like there's no really like series of videos where someone's narrating it and they play clips to sort of prove their points. I was like, okay, like, let me try that out. So basically the very basis of it, I wouldn't say is original, but I feel like it's what the 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 uh, the NASCAR YouTube community needed. Like I hadn't seen it on there. Like I mean, because I feel like if you go to every other sports community, like back in the day, you would have those types of videos. Like even for 2017, 2018, and I was like, I don't see any of that stuff for NASCAR really. So like like I would see little bits and drabs of it, but like in 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 compilation form, not not like narrating or nothing like that. So I was like you know what, let me try this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. I, I remember that time frame too with sports YouTubers. I'm a, I'm a big urinating tree fan. I also watch five points vids too. So yeah, I understand what you're saying about how that at that time frame, those channels were starting to be on the up and up. And you can even think someone like John boy in baseball too, at that mm-hmm. time frame as well. Um, but you're right. I mean, back in those days, NASCAR YouTube, I mean, you know, you think about like NASCAR Nixon, that was primarily compilations of like NASCAR memes essentially was, was a lot of what a lot of that was. There wasn't a whole lot of, uh opinion based stuff i guess i don't know if that's the right term but that's kind of the best way to describe mm-hmm. it so you were kind of you know developing kind of in that time frame so you know as we even dive a bit further backwards you know we talked a little bit about you know nascar youtube in general what was it that made you want to create videos in the first place like was it did it just come up from your love as a nascar fan or was your love of just making videos something that came from when you were younger so, I mean, I had watched YouTube my whole, like, basically most of my life up to that point. And I had, I had no clue how to make videos, though. So I had this idea, but, like, I didn't know how to execute it. So I tried, like, in 2016 as, like, a gaming channel at first. But then I ended up scrapping all the videos from that. Like, only, like, real OGs remember those days. Like, you know, the little Let's Plays I would do and stuff. But um i don't know i just it wasn't fulfilling number one and number two i didn't think it was really going anywhere you know so i was like uh, i was like you know what i was like let me try something different but i took a year off though because i was still trying to formulate like what i wanted to do and then urinating tree five points of its video show up and i'm like oh gosh um but then like once like but then i also thought like i need to do something to stand out because Okay, the racing industry is really hard to get into. It's one of the most hardest industries to get into, right? And, you know, like, let's keep it real. There are people that, you know, because of nepotism, they got a lot of money or they got a lot of connections that are in certain positions. And what my thought process was, okay, you have none of those things. And you're in North Las Vegas, Nevada, way away from that world. So you need to figure out a way to stand out so you can get like, noticed by the you know the racing community in a sense so that was like one of the plans because i was like okay like you had like i mean if you want to do that i feel like this is the only way to do it because 
yeah, sure. I ended up interning at, at uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, like I believe, yeah, almost a year later. And, you know, I had definitely learned more about the industry and stuff. But I mean, I don't know, I just it wouldn't have been fulfilling just to work for a racetrack and stuff. Like I wanted to stand out. I wanted to have my own opinions and stuff. And, and, you know, sometimes when you work for certain teams or people in the industry, you can't express your opinions like that, you know? So this is the perfect situation. So pretty much my dream in high school was to basically be like a motorsports journalist or something. I, I told my friends this, like me and, and one of my high school buddies, we reminisced about that too. He was like, you dead ass said that word for word back in, um, back in, um, your, uh, junior year of high school, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. So, you know, the dream came true, but in, I feel like the most perfect scenario, I feel like it doesn't get any better than this. Well, I mean, that's what's so great about something like YouTube is the fact that it gives multiple people, different people that may not have had that opportunity before. And it gives them a voice. It gives them a way to kind of express themselves and to create content in their own way. And then and, and I feel personally that as time goes on, I think that, you know, these content creators are beginning to gain, you know, a little bit more respect as time goes on. And I and and there truly is value in this, I feel, because of I think just the amount of voices that it creates and the amount of voices that it allows um, a sport to have or a community to have, you know, I mean, it, it's not just, you know, and this is nothing against like any of these people. It's not just the Dave Moody's that are talking on, you know, Sirius XM NASCAR radio or Daniel Trotta, Larry McReynolds, all tremendous talents, but it's not just them. You have other people that are allowed to come in and, and to have their voice as well. Yeah. And young people, I mean, like, it says, I mean, like, you know, when young people see other young people talking about racing or or whatever they like, they automatically gravitate to that because they feel some type of, you know, um, some type of, you know, similarity, you know, um, in a sense or whatever. It's like, oh, my gosh, finally, somebody my age who watches NASCAR, because I guarantee you there's a ton of kids out there, you know, are, you know, um, growing up, going to school and stuff. They they definitely watch NASCAR. But the problem is they're closeted fans because they have nobody to talk about it with or whenever they try to, they get shut down. So I feel like this community, uh, you know, is like, you know, available to um to let out that outlet, you know, whether you're commenting on a video or like, you know, a thread on Twitter or, you know, you uh, a post on Instagram and stuff. You can get your opinions out there and, you know, other race fans will either agree or, or disagree. So I feel like that's one of the best parts. I feel like you're speaking from experience a little bit, talking about the uh, um, the not having a lot of NASCAR fans around you. I mean, you grew. I mean, I'm certain that there were, but I mean, you know, I know for my perspective, I know that's kind of where I grew up in the same way. I grew up in Indiana, which you'd think would have more NASCAR fans, but it doesn't have a whole ton of NASCAR fans near it. So I'm certain. Uh, I'm certain you can relate to some of that as well. Oh, I can relate. Not some of it, all of it, because <laughs> all right, number one, I'm from I'm from North Las Vegas, and number two, I'm half black. So whenever I bring it up, people are like, what? Like it makes up, but my close friends who know me and know my family, they're like, okay, it makes more sense now. You know, like, obviously they never really got into it, but like there was one friend at the time we sort of lost touch, but there was one friend at the time um, who brought me to my first NASCAR race, um, my first NASCAR cup race in 2013. So like, I'm forever grateful for that because mm -hmm. before that, you know, back and in those days, back in those days, um, you know, it was really expensive to go to those NASCAR races and like, well, I, I wouldn't say very expensive, but like tickets were very hard to come by. So like you had a better chance of just going to trucks and like Xfinity. Yeah. So that's what I, um, that's what me and my family and especially qualifying day. So, so yeah, so pretty much, even though, even though I uh, grew up basically 10 minutes from the uh, Las Vegas motor speedway, and even though my high school was like 15 minutes, yeah, there's still, there weren't a lot of NASCAR fans like that, you know? Wow. And what race was that? Was your first race? Uh, 2013 Cobalt Tools 400, I believe is what it was called. Matt Kenseth and Casey Kane had a duel on the uh, on the final lap. Oh, yeah. I remember that race. I remember yeah. that race. That was. I, uh, yeah. 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 What were you going to say? Oh, I was, I'm sorry. I, I just also wanted to add. I was also at the 2014 race when Junior <laughs> sputtered out of gas. Like, oh, my gosh. That was oh, that was crazy. Like I, he crossed the line, the final lap of like everyone's here like let's go that slows down i'm like what and then speeds back up like that's the worst part i feel Ooh. like yeah that's the worst part it was like oh he caught it back like oh my god it was, it was oh bad. that sucks man i'm sorry yeah. so i never got to see my favorite driver win in person uh, you know what you and i can relate because i saw jeff gordon finish second not once not twice but three times and the oh, last time god. i saw him live he was on the front row on the last restart and then got 
shuffled out at Chicago land in 2020. Oh, so, yeah, 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 that's okay. uh okay. So we can relate. We both have that understanding of the pain mm-hmm. of seeing your favorite driver not come yeah. through when you're there in person. So uh that's that's unfortunate. <laughs> but hey, still, you know, I mean, I, regardless of that, coming bring. Speaking of new fans, you know, I would argue that bringing a fan to a race is probably the best way. And I think Eric said this before, too. That's probably the best way to make someone a new NASCAR fan. Wouldn't you agree? Well, yeah, just take a look at Chicago. Like most of the fan, like most of the people there, they had never been to a race before. But, oh, yeah. hey, you know, I feel like that's what you got to do nowadays. You know, bring the racing to the people, you know, and and, uh, you know, bring. And also, if you just want to go to like a regular NASCAR track, bring whoever with you and stuff, you know, like once you they, once they go once. They may not be a diehard fan, but I feel like at the very least, they'll respect it. It's like, oh, okay, well, it's something I wouldn't watch all the time, but like, okay, like, you, you know, there's more to it than that. Like, I've had people tell me, like, oh, don't they just buy a car off the street and drive it? Oh, I could do that. I drive on the highway. <laughs> and I'm just like, you're you're just ignorant, bro. Like, you're just, it's just <laughs> ignorant, you know? And, you know, but once you bring in there, it's like, oh, okay, I, I get what you're, what you're talking about now. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, you know, kind of shifting back towards YouTube here, you know, tell me you you mentioned how at the same time you had Jared, you had Danny B and yourself were all starting your YouTube channels right around the same time. So, you know, how did those connections start to develop with those people and with Eric? Because Eric talked to me a little bit about how, you know, he developed those connections with you guys. You know, where did that come from? Because that's super important, especially in a time frame when, you know, NASCAR YouTube was, uh, you know, I don't want to say it was in its infancy, but it was in a different place as we talked about than it is nowadays. Yeah. So back when YouTube had DMs, Jared DM'd me about coming on the podcast. Um, I didn't know this, but I guess like they had reached out, Danny and, and Jared. They met uh before I met them and they started the NASCAR Weekly podcast and they wanted a third guest and they reached out to Eric. And you know, Eric was still pretty big at that. I mean, he was even still big back mm-hmm. then, you know. And you know, that says a lot about Eric because he didn't even look at the numbers or whatever. Like he was just like, Oh, hey, there's people my age, they seem cool. Let me see um what uh develops here. And then they discovered my channel and then unfortunately though i could have been on the podcast a lot sooner like a couple months sooner but at the time jared sent me the dm i was on spring break and was plastered so i missed it unfortunately i didn't open them up for another uh two months and then i found it but thankfully i found it though so better late than ever and uh yeah that's how that developed and then over time um it's really developed into i mean and not just a friendship like people throw the term family around like too loosely in my opinion but it really is like they've helped me out through some tough times in my life and you know i've done the same for them as well so i mean like look we've done this podcast this is our this is season six so our sixth year doing this so i feel like anything less than that would have been disappointing you know but nah like we're we're all pretty tight. And then over time, you know, when I, um, you know, not only building connections and friendships with them, but then over time, you know, you, you know, start to build other connections over the years and stuff, you know, whether it's uh, inside the sport or outside the sport, you know, um, thankfully though, because of NASCAR um, YouTube, it's landed me some pretty good opportunities as of recently in like other fields. So it's pretty crazy. Can you tell me what some of those other fields are that you've been able to get opportunities in that you want to mention specifically? Oh, yeah. I, I you know, I, I, I tell people nowadays, like when they ask what I do, I just say, well, I'm a hustler because I do multiple things <laughs> for income, um, and, you know, from YouTube and, um, you know, working at the fairgrounds. That was cool. You know, I'd show them my channel and stuff like, hey, this is what I do. And, you know, I, I already have experience from, um, you know, interning um, at LVMS. So, you know, I think I can help you out. You know, landing that gig was cool. Um, you know, also helping out IDK, you know, with the uh, the whole commentating gig, because I had invited him out um, just to show him what it was like. And then, you know, not too long after he was working with me, then he talked to him about commentating and he was able to land that. So he's doing a fabulous job. Um, and then um, there's a new opportunity I'm going to announce on Saturday. Um, I'll tell you what it is. Well, Hold on. When is this podcast released? This is going to be released. It, it's not going to come out. It's going to come out after this Saturday. So, oh, well, I can just reveal it here then if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. no, no. So I'll be making football videos for Stark Raving Sports. I don't know if you've heard of them. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I have. 
I have heard of them. I've seen some of their videos. That's some, yeah, I, I yeah. love some of their so, content. I've watched some of their baseball stuff. That's so mm-hmm. cool. So That's basically incredible. Mike, uh, you know, um, Mike and I, uh, he's the guy who runs it. Um, we met through Table Rock Management. That's how, like our little talent um, talent group that gets us like sponsor deals or whatever. So, you know, pretty cool to be a part of that. That's how I like yeah, um, started connecting with the other sports YouTubers because Five Points Vids reached out and stuff. And he's like, hey, I think you'd be great for this. But yeah, no, Mike reached out to me and he's like, hey, I have this idea. And I was like, OK. And then I read it and I was like, I was a little skeptical at first, as I always am about everything. Um, but then as he explained it more, I was like, well, I thought about like what, you know, what would have happened if I, you know, it's been a what if in my head for a while about um, what if I would have went the football route? Because I'm a really huge football fan, you know, as I feel like most of this, you know, most of this country is right. So yeah. I always thought about, OK, what if I did that instead? Not that I wasn't happy with NASCAR, but, you know, I always think about this because I feel like I can be, um, you know, very diverse in my content. And I thought about a second channel, but then I was like, no, nah, it's going to be hard making videos and, you know, you're not going to get paid for it at first. And there's no guarantee that you're going to get the channel monetized. So I felt like it wasn't worth it. But with this, they already have a built in audience of um, a little over 140,000 subs. Um, they do mostly baseball content, but um, they've done some video, some football videos here and there, but they want to get consistent with it. And you know, I have a lot of ideas. So, you know, it felt like a no brainer. So they already have a team of editors. So I just have to do the audio. So it's a, it's an awesome deal. Wow, man. I can't wait for you to be on that, man. I've watched some Stark raving videos. I mean, dude, you and I have a lot of mutual fun YouTube watches. Mm-hmm. I mean, you and I both watch urinating tree. I'm a huge urinating tree fan. Love his, uh, Oh gosh. I'm like, uh, I- I'm blanking on it. Whatever his weekly NFL video is. I keep blanking oh, this on it. weekend, this week in sports ball, this week in sports ball. I love that every week. So, uh, out of curiosity, favorite football team. Oh, uh, you- Los Angeles Rams. Well, St. Louis slash Los Angeles Rams. Um, main reason, um, back in those days, North, um, Las Vegas didn't have any professional sports teams. And of course, football, um, well, besides the XFL's outlaws the first year. Um, <laughs> yes. but, but, um, uh, running back by the name of Steven Jackson, absolute monster. If I were to compare him with any other running back today, certainly Derrick Henry uh, type talent. Um, unfortunately, he played on those losing teams, but he ran so hard, ran people over. And also the main part, he grew up in Las Vegas and his touchdown celebration was uh, rolling the dice. So that was cool. And he had the cool dreadlock. So he sucked me into being a, a diehard Rams fan. The problem is, though, um, I didn't know they were that bad. When I was first a fan, was, I was only in third grade. So I was like, OK, um, so, yeah, I didn't see them make the playoffs until my uh, sophomore year of college. Yep, I remember when they were I in remember. L.A. Yeah, when they were in L.A. But, yes. hey, you know, they have the Super Bowl now. And I think um, we might go through another losing period again. But hey, it's all good. We uh, got the ring. So it's totally it's worth all it. right. It's all right. You know what? I'm I'm a Bears fan. My first year I watched football, the Bears made the Super Bowl. And since then, it's gone uh, downhill from there. So, hey, but Fields, I, love I know, Fields so I know. Much. And y'all got the draft picks more. And I know. Stuff. I was like, that was a steal for that. So I was like, I am. It, well, y'all better win this year. I feel like if y'all don't, then I don't I don't know what to tell you. I am big time excited, big time excited. So since we're kind of on this topic here of like football and some of these other YouTubers, tell me how you actually, you told me how you watched them. How'd you get connected with some of these guys like urinating tree and five points fids and all that sort of stuff? Cause I saw you played, I believe it was a softball with them a few weeks no, ago. Baseball, or was, baseball. I, the worst, worst swing of all time. Hey, I haven't played since the fourth grade. And also um, I didn't train a lick for this. So it was my fault. So, <laughs> I was okay. just happy to be in Portland. So it's, it's okay. But you know, anyways, how did you connect? connect with some of these guys obviously this isn't nascar related but still how did you connect with some of these guys um well we had reached out to your name tree about being on the podcast and by some divine miracle he dm'd us this was our first year so having urinating tree on was a big deal established us more yeah. and then through he's him, made some nascar content before i believe yeah, so yeah he's just, he used to be a fan but he's not but yeah mm-hmm. he's, he's done that before and um uh then through him we met five points vids and then eventually they invited us on their podcast the dumpster fire and you know we would talk every now and then and then um i believe it was yeah 2021 uh he reaches out to me about um uh joining his uh his um the, uh, the management team and stuff 
And I was like, oh, okay, okay. It's a good way to make some money and stuff. And, you know, plus doing ad reads, that's not really hard. So, you know, I do them, you know. But, um, yeah, through that, I was able to meet uh, multiple YouTubers. Um, um, you probably watch them. Uh, do you? Uh, would you mind if I, like, um, list off the, the ones? I mean, it, it's kind of a long list. Uh, you uh, just, mind. you know, just, just list, list through them. Go right ahead. All right, hold on. I'm sorry. Let me find it really quick. All right. You yeah. probably, uh, I'm pretty sure you watch most of these guys. So five points, uh, yep. ta- uh, tactics, throne, uh, drew NTE, uh, Brett Coleman, that good sports, Eric gray, Joseph Vincent, uh, mm-hmm. set the edge, Cole Adams. Um, let's see, get like Coop, uh, flight Mike, flight mm-hmm. Mike's one of the biggest users. So that's just to name a few, yeah. but, but yeah. Yeah. And, so I was able to meet them and yeah that's got to be pretty cool you know to be able to meet some of these people that like you look up to you know i mean you know and that's well that's what's let, interesting well let me rephrase that i you know I, I wouldn't say like look up to like i respect their content you know what i mean mm-hmm. like i don't know like i learned at a young age like don't put people on pedestals you know what i mean like you know what i mean so I, you know so i i don't know if i'm looking uh too deep into that and stuff but like i definitely respect their content and i've definitely uh became uh good friends with them and stuff but i don't know like as far as like you know looking at i mean like i respect what they do basically yeah no that, that's that's a good philosophy you know to be able you know respecting their content and stuff like that and you know mm-hmm. it's it's kind of weird because you know, I mean, and, and it's to a lesser extent in the YouTube community, but you're 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 somewhat competing with each other to a to some extent, not really, but to some extent you are. Um, I think particularly, you know, you look at, uh, you know, I, I think you look at broadcasting particularly, which you're somewhat involved in that. You know, you look at that, you're kind of competing with each other, but you you still respect each other's content and you push each other to be better, which is really which is really awesome to see. You know, oh, yeah, you always love that's the way the community should be like you can't stagnate like you know like hey and also too like you know like hey if if other people start watching you know other people more than you then you gotta look within yourself you know it's like hey like what what do i gotta do you know like you know it's easy to blame the algorithm and stuff and yeah to some extent yeah it definitely doesn't help sometimes but you know at the end of the day i feel like hey like you make the videos so like you know it's you know, your responsibility and stuff. And, you know, it's not always my fault. There are certain topics that don't, you know, hit like that. So, but I don't know if I really agree with the standpoint of like competing or at the very least kind of competing. Like Mm -hmm. the way I see it is the more people that are in it, you know, that's great for everybody because then people are going to, you know, okay, like I watched his video and then recommended my video, Jared's video, Eric, you know what I mean? And so on and so on and so on. And until they uh, get the idea like, oh, OK, there's like multiple YouTubers in the community. Wow. I can watch his videos mm-hmm. whenever, you know, he uploads on a certain day. So mm-hmm. that's the way I see it. And also too, like, you know, the more like I, I've recently started noticing like the publication started getting on YouTube front stretch. Uh, what's another one that recently got on YouTube? There's frontstretch.com. Uh Oh, I'm forgetting the name. Oh, kicking, kicking the tires, I believe. Yes. And yes. then uh, Toby, Toby Christie. There's, there's one more. I feel like I'm missing. Oh man, I, I'm gonna feel bad for missing it. But anyways, um, also Noah Lewis too. You know, he's mm-hmm. doing his thing. Um, but yeah, no. So like to have those reporters, you know, or and these publications, you know, um, join the community is really big for us because not only do we have more clips to use and stuff for our stuff, but also like, you know, you need the official, you know reporting stuff on there so i like that you know it um it not only um adds to the um to the nascar youtube community but in uh in a lot of ways it definitely um uh legitimizes it for sure yeah you're right i mean you know and, and social media is a great way i mean i think that a lot of companies are learn are have learned at this point about how big that social media is and how helpful something like mm-hmm. youtube is to break news and all that sort of stuff like that's always really big for a lot of these companies and you know speaking of youtube you mentioned the algorithm a little bit and you kind of touched on you know how challenging that creating content can be you know what what are some of the challenges that you've had to go through as a content creator throughout these last few years i mean because you know it's 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 never, you know, I, 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 for, I forget what the exact quote is, but like, you know, success is never a straight line. It's there's always peaks, valleys, all that sort of stuff. So what are some of the struggles you've had to deal with? Um, I'd say just with, you know, just certain ideas at times, because like, I don't know, I'll have one idea and then I'm like, no, 
let me put that on the back burner and then I'll do something else or whatever, or um, not being discouraged when a video doesn't do well. Like I still have some problems with that. It's not like I like, um, you know, throw temper tantrums and stuff, but like, I'm just like, what? Like, like, come on, man. You know, because you work so hard on a video and you have certain expectations, there's certain standards uh, to a point and then you don't meet them. And then you're just like, man, like, you know, what's going on? So, and then you just gotta be like, all right, well, let's, let's see what else can work. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, you know, that I feel like that's the biggest challenge, you know, like the other stuff about, you know, like learning how to make videos and stuff, or like learning how to make better thumbnails and like, where to like, I don't know. I like, I didn't really find that particularly hard. Not that it was easy, but like, I don't know. It wasn't like too difficult. You know, I just, you know, I had to, you know, take my time just learning uh, the certain, you know, softwares and stuff like that. So um so yeah yeah well you talk about how some things don't perform as well as you expect and then you have other things sometimes that you don't expect to perform well and they they blow yeah. up like out of complete nowhere i mean it's uh you know it's 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 one of those things where there's really no playbook you know of, of how to mm-hmm. do it i mean you know again and youtube's been around for a while now so i think we're a lot more intelligent now in terms of how to be successful on the internet but there really is no true playbook about it and that can be I know for me personally, like, well, like, you know, again, and I don't create YouTube content like you do, but I know for me personally, like that can be a struggle sometimes is the fact that, you know, there is no playbook and it's kind of hard to know exactly what's going to hit because the randomest things hit. I mean, you think about videos that have gone viral on the Internet over the years. I mean, you wonder where did that come from? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, man. So, yeah, you just got to go back to the drawing board, see what works, but also to what helps uh, and for sure. What helps is having multiple platforms like my Twitter really helps out with like people like, you know, um, clicking um, on my channel and stuff, because I don't know, I I didn't realize at first when I joined Twitter, like once you kind of, you know, establish an audience and stuff and, you know, once some of your tweets start taking off, like a lot of people will click on your profile and I'm like, holy crap, like I didn't realize that. So like, it, you know, that's why I have the uh, the YouTube logo there and stuff. And, you know, it, it um it also keeps track of uh, of logo clicks, too. So usually whenever people visit my profile, they click on that. So, you know, it definitely helps out a lot. And uh, Instagram, that's more of like personal, but like sort of like semi personal, like combination of like personal and, you know, like other professional stuff I promote. Um, and then threads, you know, threads. <laughs> I don't think anyone's on threads anymore. But when I was on TikTok. I found that somewhat helpful. But then once YouTube shorts became a thing, I was like, there's no point for a TikTok. Yeah, I mean, tech, YouTube shorts, threats, all sort of stuff that just shows the cha- landscapes constantly changing, you know, mm-hmm. with with these sorts of things. And that's I think, you know, that's 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 a challenge, you know, to have to try to handle, you know, the constantly evolving mm-hmm. and constantly changing air, areas. And again, you know, you mentioned a little bit of evolution there in terms of just having to, uh, you know, realizing, hey, you know, my 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 Twitter page is allowing people to point uh, towards, you know, my YouTube page and all that sort of stuff. And so, you know, I mean, you're you know, it's 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 all about kind of evolving and adapting, which you feel that that's pretty accurate in terms of YouTube. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they're trying to be not um one of uh one of um well they're not trying to be another platform they're trying to be the platform because they've added you know they always had videos but now YouTube Shorts uh you know that came from TikTok um stories uh sharing stories that came from Instagram um you know and then the uh the community tab. I feel like that was somewhat um, inspired by Twitter because I mean, if you're not on Twitter, you can just post the community tab whenever. And then people, you know, a lot of people usually like that, you know, whenever I post stuff. So that's also like another good aspect of YouTube. So it's multiple things, you know, there's, there's multiple avenues on that platform that help get your channel out there because the algorithm is very interesting. Like sometimes you'll get recommended something out of the blue. So like, I feel like definitely there's some people commenting that are like, um, like there's been some people who have commented on mine or like other people's stuff that are like, I have no idea what you're talking about because <laughs> it just pops up on their feed and stuff. So that's very interesting. But no, nah, that's why I consider YouTube the best platform, because I feel like for the most part, there's level more level headed people, especially in the comments, believe it or not, uh, compared to like Reddit of all places. I don't even start on that, but um. But yeah, so that's why I consider it the best platform, not because I'm on there, but I already considered it the best beforehand because 
if you do a survey, most people go spend most of the time on YouTube compared to every other site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. YouTube is is pretty, uh, you know, it's kind of becoming that sort of jack of all trades, you know, type of place. And and uh, it's becoming that sort of, uh, you know, that that sort of place that kind of does a little bit of everything in, in yeah. a lot of senses. So you discussed a little bit about how you're doing your a little bit about, you know, some of your future, about how you're going to do like some football videos and, and that sort of stuff with the with the Stark Raving Sports mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, is is that going to cause any of your NASCAR content to change in any way? Or are you still going to be doing the same thing with NASCAR content as you did? I mean, not necessarily doing less, but is that going to maybe inspire you to do your content a little bit differently? Uh, the second one, because mm -hmm. I, I've thought about it. Like, it's like, you know, there, there comes a point where I don't know, like people just get tired of like the same type of videos. You know, I I've been like that too. And I, this is my sixth year. So in, in internet years, that's like, Oh, that's a lot. It's a lot more in internet years, pretty much. But, um, but yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, I've thought about definitely like making them better somehow because Stark Raving Sports they have a team of editors. So, but the problem is like I don't know if I could really afford a consistent editor like that. So, if I were to make my content a lot different and in some ways better, I would have to learn it myself and stuff too. So, I got to set some time aside just to see. What I what I would even want to do, though, you know, because, you know, there's certain ideas I want to do or there's certain ideas that I've already done. You know, it's my sixth year doing it. So, you know, it's like, you know, coming up with certain ideas, it can be kind of hard at times, but, you know, it's it's part, it's mm -hmm. definitely a part of the challenge for sure. But basically, no, nothing's going to change with uh, BFM and stuff. It's not like I'm going to leave that channel just for good or whatever. But no, nah, this is like something that, you know, I've you know, that'll, uh, fill out, um, that'll, uh, fulfill a, what if I've always thought about, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm certain that it would. And, you know, I mean, you know, you mentioned how you earlier on how your aspiration to be a sport or a motorsports journalist at one point, that was your goal, you know, at, at one point in your life. And so, you know, do you, do you at some point want to go into that area at some point or are you, or do you want to just kind of stay on the internet for the time being? I'd rather stay here because really? I, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I haven't finished school yet, but then I don't know. Like, I'm not really like the best writer. You know, I can be very illiterate at times, too. So looking back, like I didn't I don't know, like I'm not a journalism major anymore. Like my major was like more in like digital media and stuff, which is where I'm like currently in right now. You know what I mean? So I feel like not nah, like, you know, those days of me, of me wanting to be a journalist are gone. but then. At the same time, there's like a challenge, there's like certain challenges with like trying to get yourself established in that whole media field because, you know, we try to get credentialed for races. And at first it was like, it was like, oh, well, you're not journalist, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, we got big platforms for the community, though. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to be braggadocious, but I mean, let's just be real. I mean, like, you know, we spent, you know, years growing our followings and stuff like at least let us do something besides sit at home or whatever, you know, and um you know, we had to do that. So people were like, oh, they're they're never going to get credentialed. Oh, they're never going to, you know, do this and that. And then, you know, look what happened now. So um, I don't know. Like, I mean, in some ways, I'm kind of a journalist in some ways, right? Whenever I go to these tracks and cover it. So, uh, you know, I, I like doing this because I get to work for myself. Um, I get to make the decisions. I'm the boss. So um, I feel like if I were to go to the journalism route, you know, I'd more most likely work for somebody else you know? mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense and you know you mentioned you know some of the challenges of you know trying you know to to garner that you know that platform within the sport in in and of itself and you know i mean obviously you know with with a new platform there's that that's always going to be a challenge in a sense but mm -hmm. you know i i you know i'm not on the inside but i think i've seen from the outside that i think that that there's starting to be a warm up to the idea of you guys, you know, being, you know, more, uh, I guess, highly respected, I guess, is probably the best way to maybe the best way to put it. You could probably describe it better than me, but, you know, probably, you know, in within the NASCAR media field, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, guys like I, I'll shout these guys out. Jeff Gluck's been cool with us since the beginning. Like he was very helpful. Um, Davey Siegel as well. Um, mm hmm. And then uh, Noah Lewis, uh, Peter, Peter Secta, um, or Secta, I think that's how you say his last name, damn it. But he knows who he is, Peter. Um, and then um, 
with uh, Steven Toronto. Yeah, Steven Toronto from CBS Sports has been cool. Um, and then front stretch guy. I forget it, but it's drawn a blank. But basically, like multiple people have been very helpful with us. And you, you know, like there are definitely some people who still don't like like or respect what we do, I feel like, or you know, are somewhat jealous to an extent, you know, because I didn't understand it at first, but to some extent I do now because the way the industry is like is um the way the industry works, I feel like is okay. If you land a job or something like that with like NASCAR, or like a team or like anything else, it's like you're only there for so long. You know what I mean? Like you're usually out within like, I feel like two to three years. Like there's so much turnover within the racing industry. So, and also too, people, they spent years getting these positions and stuff like some decades upon decades. And then all of a sudden these guys from a new platform come in and they're trying to, you know, get this and that, you know what I mean? So um, you know, there's definitely still some challenges with that, but yeah, I agree though. For the most part, uh, people are starting to uh, respect us now for it. Um, they're like, Hey, like, you know, they're not causing problems. They're, it's not like they're recording the races and stuff. So, and then NASCAR finally realized, and we were able to get that so, uh, sorted out. Um, but yeah, no, we were able to get that sorted out for sure. And, you know, I'm not trying to step on anyone's toes. You know, we're all here to to do a job. I'm not any more special than anyone else. You know, this is a job, you know, I got a job, you got a job. So let's just, you know, let's just roll. That's the thing that strikes me is that, you know, you guys, you're not trying to usurp anybody. You know, you're not trying to take people's jobs or anything like that. You're just, you're just trying to document NASCAR and cover NASCAR in a unique, you know, I guess for lack of a better term, more modern way that reaches a different demographic and that's what you're trying to do at at the end of the day and and you know i think you know to a large extent you know i think that companies again i think are beginning to realize the value of these things like social mm -hmm. media as time goes on and, and and i think you know again I, I think that's the biggest thing is you're not trying to to usurp anybody's job you're just trying to do it differently but i also will admit too i didn't make life harder on myself though because there would be certain antics I would do and stuff like that. You know, like back in those days, it's like, it's weird because it's like, okay, it's like you're, you're covering the sport, but you're also a content creator. So you have to be entertaining. And, yes. you know, I feel like, I feel like, okay, you know, YouTube, it's a lot different, you know, put out the content, you know, talk about the history, but then for Twitter, it's a whole lot different on there too. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, yeah, we're content creators, but this is a form of entertainment. So, you know, yes. I feel like, you know, whether it's an opinion or whether I just like say a joke or something like that, you know, there have been certain times I've landed myself in hot water. Oh yeah. And, and, and I've had to deal with it and you have to deal with it, you know, and, and whatever, whenever I would feel down about it, I would, I would, um, I would think back, I, I would just say to myself, well, Hey, if you can't handle it, you know, you can always go work a nine to five, nothing wrong with that. But, you know, if you can't handle the criticism, you know, if you can't take yeah. the heat, stay out the kitchen, dairy. And I had to basically tell myself that and, uh, you know, realize that, you know, it's like, hey, there are certain things that, I'm, um, well, I had asked myself this question, you know, I was like, damn, why do certain people not, um, not like me? And it's, it's, you know, has somewhat to do with you. <laughs> it's your fault sometimes. I mean, sometimes I would do you know, excuse my language, stupid shit, you know, and then, uh, but eventually, though, as I got older, you know, transitioning from my early 20s to my mid 20s. And I started the channel when I was 18, though, too. So I was still in my teens, you know, at the time. So, you know, eventually, you got to grow up and grow out of it. But I feel like for the most part, I found a good balance between, um, you know, doing, you know, just the regular, you know, reporting NASCAR opinions, and also, you know, having some fun on the side. Yeah, I think balance is a great way to describe it because you're trying to be creative and be entertaining and you're trying to to cater to this one platform. But at the same time, you know, there are certain you know, there are certain expectations that you have whenever you're at these different places. And I think that can be, you know, you know, I there are it's just it's just part of being a new platform. There are some growing pains that come with that. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you know, it just it, it takes time for that balance to kind of be struck in a lot of ways. Right. And, and so, you know, it's by trial and error, too. So it's like, OK, one thing works and then another thing doesn't or whatever. But, you know, the thing is, though, when you do that, 
you know, usually you don't have an audience that watches everything. Unfortunately, uh, you know, unfortunately in um, all my cases, my audience saw everything and they would rip me to stretch certain times. So, you know what? But hey, I like that though, to some extent, because you know what? Um, they keep it fair. You know, I try to keep it fair and it's like, hey, Darian, I don't agree with this or, you know, hey, Darian, that was stupid what you, um, what you did, blah, blah, blah. So, hey, you know what? They got different opinions. So, but for the most part, you know, they, they love what I do. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's better, you know. I mean, accountability is a great thing. It really yeah, is. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because I mean, like I do the same thing. So I'd be a hypocrite to, uh, to complain about like, well, you can't do that to me. You know what I mean? It's like, Hey, it's fair game. It's the internet. So everything stays on the internet forever. And, uh, you know, if you do a say or do a certain thing, then Hey, deal with it. Well, absolutely. And you know what? I mean, it just, you know, you, you've talked about it. I mean, you, you've had to learn a lot of difficult lessons during your time. Hey, and, I learned uh, the hard way. I learned the hard yeah, way, unfortunately. Learn, learn the hard way in, 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 in some ways, but you know, you know, you feel, I'm, I, I, I can tell that you feel that you've, you've learned a lot and you feel that you become a better human being as a result of that. Not yeah, necessarily I'm, just, just a content creator. Yeah. And I'm still learning. Hey, we're, some, we're learning every day. We're learning every day, man. We're learning something new every day, man, mm -hmm. about ourselves or about whatever, you know, whatever you you're into and stuff. So, so yeah. And also too, you know, I had, you know, been blessed to have, you know, certain YouTube connections that have given me, you know, some sound advice too. And also people in the industry giving me sound advice as well, you know, and, uh, you know, and also shout out to, uh, Michael Carey too, who works with SRX. Like he was very helpful as well. Um, I believe mm -hmm. he does stuff for NBC still or Fox, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, no. So he's, he was also very helpful too. <laughs> absolutely hey love love shouting all these guys out that's really cool to see so you know darian do you have a a youtube video or project that you are most proud of or like your favorite youtube video or favorite project that you have you know we talked about as you've evolved all these sorts of things maybe it's being credentialed at a race like we talked about you know do you have something that you're you're most proud of Oh, yeah. Just this year alone. I mean, as far as the credential side of things, Daytona 500, Indy 500 credentials in the same year and, you know, able to um, uh, to get both for my very first time. Like I had to claw and scratch to get that. Like, like, like you have to call, um, excuse me, you have to claw and scratch in this industry, you know, to get what you want. Right. And, you know, being able to do that was, um, you know, on my own, by the way, was unbelievable. It's like it would be different if I had um, if I had, you know, help from like the Daily Downforce or like Eric and stuff like that. But no, I, you know, I did it myself. You know, they recognize the platform. They realized like, oh, OK, he's here just to, to cover. He's not here to for any type of shenanigans, you know. So. um, So, yeah, you know, dude, those are the two biggest races in this country and all of, you know, not just the United States, all of North America, you know, I, I, you know, everyone knows the Indy 500 around the world, you know, it's the biggest race ever, you know, and um, to be credentials for that for the first time in the same year, that's, that's absolutely crazy, man. And then as far as YouTube videos and content, um, I would say, you know what? I, I wouldn't say bus videos. I know I'm well known for that, but at the end of the day, you're still like talking like to a certain extent bad, you know, bad about a driver, but like, you know, it's like, well, he had certain expectations. So, you know, that's the flip side of it. So, you know, I try to keep it as fair as possible, but I don't, I wouldn't say I'm proud of that. I would say I'm more, I'm proud of the gone too soon series, especially uh, the, um, especially when I do a video on a driver not too many people know about. So last year alone, um, Casey Elliott and Kara Hendrick, those were the two biggest ones from that series last year. And a lot of people were like, whoa, I didn't know, like, you know, I didn't know, um, you know, um, Chase Elliott had a cousin, you know, that raced before him. I didn't know, you know, Kara Hendrick um, was this female driver, you know, who was up and coming in, you know, sprint cars and stuff, you know, and, you know, then they learned something, you know, something new uh, about these drivers and, and, um, you know, their memory lives on forever, I guess. And, and you know, it, the Kara Hendrick one meant a lot because that was one I wasn't really expecting to do well because not a whole lot of people knew about her. But, you know, like it ended up taking off and I was like, oh, that's awesome. And then also the best part about that was seeing one of the comments that was like, oh, I'm a longtime family friend, blah, blah, blah. And they were so detailed and uh, describing the family members and stuff and like, you know, their experiences with them that I was like, okay, okay. So um, I verified them like that was real and stuff. And, you know, she showed her parents that and stuff. So that, that meant a lot. So I'm sure they really appreciated that because she passed away back in 
1990 or 1991 yeah so wow you know yeah exactly so you know for people to you know to a lot of people to watch that video and the casey ellie video was uh unbelievable so i'd say that for sure is what i'm most proud of you're telling a lot of stories and that's that's awesome to see you love telling you know the the unique and different stories of uh different people that maybe not always people have heard about but uh you're still i'm doing that and you're teaching people and you're also you know bring back some good memories for others. And that's, uh, mm-hmm. that's really awesome to see Darian. Well, Darian, thank you so very much for joining us here. Oh, we're done. Next we're Gen done Creators. already. We're done already. <laughs> Come on, man. I was just getting started. I was just getting started, man. I was just, uh, I thought this was the warm up, but no, nah, no, nah, I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm glad y'all started this series, you know, and I can't wait to hear the other ones too. And, uh, you know, maybe I can, you know, suggest a few creators right now. I'd love for you to talk to slap shoes. Well, well, first off the, uh, the podcast crew and then slap shoes, David land, uh, Ellie productions. That's a guy who I didn't realize he's been on YouTube for a decade, but his stuff has recently been popping off. That is a guy I think you should have on. And um, who's someone else? Maybe a real Radman, maybe to, to discuss video games. And also IDK player. IDK player does the commentating at the fairgrounds. He does commentating, you know, in the um, um, on iRacing and stuff. And uh, he's going to be commentating the NWP 400. So that's going to be our big race. Uh um, and you said this comes out Tuesday, so it's actually on a Tuesday. So yeah, make sure yeah, you tune into that. Yeah, this this podcast. As we're recording, we don't have a release date for this podcast set oh, totally yet. Sorry. But uh, <laughs> sorry. Usually, usually it's on Fridays. It's usually when we release it. Oh but, uh, my bad. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's all good, Darian. It's all good. Well, once again, Darian Gilliam, Black Flags Matter on Next Gen Creators. What a conversation that was with Darian. You know, he was very honest and he was uh, very open about, you know, what he uh, has gone through and uh, also his story as a NASCAR content creator. And, you know, also even got into a little bit of some of the stuff he's into outside of NASCAR and some of the content creators that he uh, has been able to connect with and been able to, uh, you know, partner with in some aspects and uh, also starting his new journey at Stark Raving Sports as well. You know, Darian is someone that, you know, he's doing a lot of different things. He's uh, learned a lot of lessons throughout his time as a NASCAR content creator, but uh, there's no denying his passion and there is no denying just uh, simply how much that uh, he cares and just how much he wants to, uh, you know, create content that's very unique and interesting and content that um, you love. And uh, he also just love to hear him talk about you know one of the highlights of his career which is being able to be credentialed at the indy 500 and the daytona 500 which those are both uh talk about dreams come true for a lot of people that are aspiring to go into nascar media in some way he was able to live some of those out and that was uh, just really cool to hear him talk about how great that was for him thank you so much folks for tuning into this episode of next gen creators once again i am joshua lapowski with the daily downforce we will see you next time